I told my dad when I was 13. I'm either gonna make it or I'm gonna die. Like, there's no other option. And being on stage was my breath and like my chance to show people who I actually was. And so I just never quit and I don't think I ever will. One, two, one. This is called Long Way Home. Growing up here, when we moved here and we were opening the restaurant and building it, there was a coffee shop across the street and a liquor store and a mercantile, and that was it. There wasn't much to do for a 12, 13-year-old kid other than hang around family, and I did. I worked here full-time since I was 12, 13. My dad is a huge music fan, so he was always playing music. I mean, if I walked into the house and there wasn't an album playing, I don't care what time it was, something was wrong. So it just was like my familiar place. And then with guitar and singing my own songs, it was like, I don't want to perform that. I just want to be a songwriter and then someone else can do it. And I feel like you were like, nope, you're good enough. Get out there, show them, show them your song. See, and you're showing them. I mean, it is 17 years later and I'm comfortable in my skin, but I think that you helped me get there through pushing me and supporting me in an area where I feel like most parents would have been like, you need a plan B. We're staying at that hotel. I must have been 13. And then we see that Robert Plant and Allison Krauss is playing at the venue right next to it. And their tour bus was at our hotel. So what did you do? You What did you do? You made me get my guitar? Yeah stand in front of Robert Plant's bus and play the 10 songs that I knew at the time over and over and over again. I think we, how long did we stand there? About an hour and a half. And I thought for in. sure he was gonna come out and, uh, and then, you know, yeah. take you on tour with him, you know, but it did, well, anyway, it he will. Always, it, he always had big dreams for me, even when I didn't see it. I just feel so lucky that I had that because I feel like if I didn't have him and I wrote a song in any other of my friends' households and like showed their parents if I was their child, I'd be doing something else right now. Like he somehow was able to see what I didn't see and then 
through time and patience and consistency show me what I can do through believing in me. And I think that's amazing. And I really appreciate it. And he's my real hero, you know. I was born legally blind. My mom and dad were kind of like homeopathic, so they didn't know that I was blind until I was four years old. Can't really remember a lot, you know, when you're a small one, two, three, four year old, but I do feel like I leaned on sound because I didn't have the visual. Music and sound is where I feel most comfortable. It's the, the sense that I have, like we all have our senses, it's my most comfortable sense in myself. It's where I feel safe and I can hide and and be seen. And the, it's just like all the things that, that make, they bring me joy is music. Do you have a favorite? <laughs> you know, I wish I did, but the my favorites always get lost, so I stopped getting attached to them. <laughs> Cause I used to be like, oh, where is it? I can't play without it. So I just go with these guys. Usually doesn't look this cool. I usually have like a collection of randos, but. They're like my brothers. I mean, I always I say this every show, but we go by Jade Jackson, but that's silly because I would not be here if it wasn't for, you know, my bandmates. Check one, two, check one, check one, check one, two, check one, two. biggest theater in my hometown. That's like a little cherry on top of what's really important. And what's really important is just like, when I figured out that I had the ability to tell other people's stories who maybe didn't have the opportunity or chance to get up on stage and sing about their lives, just put something in me where I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm so shy and timid in real life and I have such a hard time expressing myself and my needs and my feelings. Right before you walk on stage, everything becomes real. First one that messed it up right here. <laughs> yeah. We just keep rolling and we just support each other. That's our job. That's the main job. Our talents come second to our friendships and support. So that's what's up? All right, there you go. Good job, y'all. Amen. All those real emotions of like, you know, I'm upset or all those emotions are there and they're different day to day depending on what happened that day. But but they kind of stay at the staircase. Okay, go get comfortable, let's roll. Everybody was always like, you're so shy in real life, but then you get up there on stage and perform, like, how do you do that? It's like almost like I'm more comfortable on stage performing than I am in a social circle with people. Here on the stage, it gives me the opportunity to breathe and like look inward. It's like my safe place. It's where like I feel comfortable and safe in like my cocoon. So everybody having a good time? <laughs> this next song is called Finish Line. Yeah. Well, I don't care about things cause they don't care about me. 
My skin's a lot thicker than you'd think it'd be just driven towards this thing. And I really don't know what it is other than this feeling in my gut, like it's supposed to, it's what I'm supposed to do. It's like work for it hard. And then at the end, whatever you get, you're gonna appreciate more than if it was just handed to you.